The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 634. Friendship Through Punches. Yeah! What? The leaf flew across the grass, all four hooves impacting at the same time. The shock of the blow sent her adversary back two steps, and Valet flipped away, landing upright and panting. Helping, Orina asked, Battle Cloak cast aside, together with Valet in his Valdi's broad concert field without another soul in sight. Yeah, Valet flicked her bangs out of her eyes with a wingtip, breathing heavily. Thanks for coming. Sometimes there's nothing like, you know. She vaulted forward, locking her four hooves and bringing them together in an overhead smash. Marina blocked with one meaty forelimb, catching and straining against Valet's weight before flinging her to the side. Again, Valet landed upright, carving four furrows where her hooves hit the grass. Like sparring for clearing your head, Marina replied. No need to explain. I know how it is. Valet looked at her hooves, feeling like they'd need to discharge a thousand more punches before her frustration at the day's events was spent. Still, she was undeniably better, cooled by the lingering dampness in her coat and rainwater in the grass, not confined to explaining how she felt for words alone. Gritting her teeth, she charged again. Take this! First a punch, then a twirl, kicking with both hind legs and spinning again into an uppercut. Marina was too heavy to be launched, but she lost another step of ground under the onslaught, returning with a heavy slam that Valet had to roll to avoid. <sighs> <sighs> Valet paused for breath, again coming to a stop and facing Marina. Bananas! Thanks! Really just had a stressful day and I don't think punching Shinespark's ship or yelling at nobody would have been the same. Talk about it however you want, Marina invited, stands ready for more. I'm listening. Valet tensed her legs to spring again, clashing and breaking apart with Marina once more. So, hey, she said during the next break for breath. I can trust you with pretty much anything, right? You and your friends brought my daughter back from the dead, Marina returned, lowering her guard. But if you want to talk, I don't usually have a lot to say. Yeah, Valet uh, looked away at the distant forest grove splitting up the farmland. You ever interacted much with a bad pony called Crystal? Crystal from the mansion? Uh, Marina shook her head. Everyone learns to leave her alone sooner or later. Apparently not me, Valet sighed. I might have, uh, gone to talk with her twice now and had a really frustrating time. Marina didn't look surprised. Why? Why talk with her? Valet shrugged. I don't know, because she hates Chauncey, and I know Chauncey's up to no good, and figured I'd hear it from someone who's been around him longer. Neither time I've even been able to ask before the subject has changed. We have a nasty cat fight. You shouldn't talk to her alone, Marina said after a while. Some creatures have a way with words that makes them very damaging to speak with on your own. Where were your friends in this? Uh, Valet looked down. Didn't bring them. Shinespark's recovering from the tournament. Maple, he's getting involved in all this stuff. Gerardo, I don't know. I guess I didn't. If you're trying to keep them safe because you don't think they can handle it. Marina pointed a hoof at her. You don't look like you're handling it well either. Valet flattened out in the grass, sighing. Yeah, doesn't mean they take it any better. I just like... I used to be a bad guy, you know? And I'm rich? Uh, Marina shrugged. I can relate. You remember my story. Low-class punk, almost a pirate. Yeah. Uh, Valet nodded. Yeah, so you'd probably get it. The thing is, talking with Crystal makes me feel... dirty. Like I'm ignoring all the stuff I've learned and the better stuff that's happened to me and just going and acting like I did back then. And honestly, I wish that wasn't a problem because playing dirty and being resourceful is kind of important when you need to be able to protect your friends from anything at a moment's notice. But it is, and I don't know what's up with me or what to do about it. Marina watched her for a moment. How high of a standard do you hold yourself to? I don't know, Valia averted her gaze. I mean, this is the Empire, right? Most everyone here kinda hates Bad Pony Guts, and it was the same in Iron Ridge vote that might have been more my fault. But I used to embrace the reputation and do whatever I could to feel like I deserved it, because nothing's worse than having all that heaped on you for no reason, you know? Only well, you now it's, uh, well, it feels like maybe if I try a little harder, stuff won't be so lousy in the Empire for me all the time. You know, 
Because I'm a bad pony? So, infinitely high then, Marina said. If Garshiva or the Nightbotter could do that for your kind, they aren't. How often does that leave you with a sense of triumph, like the good makes up for the bad? You mean in terms of stuff I do? Oh, bananas, I don't know. Well, I shrugged. There was, uh, well, the time I beat up Herman and saved Anridge. That was pretty awesome. Of course, it was also mostly thankless, except for my friends, but still. And then there was... Uh, she winced. Uh, I was gonna see the pirate ship, but that was kind of just a mess. And then when I went to save Starlight, only she had already gotten herself out and wound up doing more to save me than the other way around. I guess I don't even know. Marina nodded. And how often does it leave you feeling dirty or like you're not good enough? I can see where this is going. Well, I pulled on her face with her hooves grimacing into the grass. But Marina, like, I don't want to settle for just being okay. Or a bad pony who sometimes does good things. You don't. You, uh, you ever heard where I really came from? Marina shook her head. Up there, fully pointed at the sky. Moonglass, crazy scientists, don't know how they did it, but they put me in someone else's body. Like, can you get this? What keeps me up at night is that I'm afraid I'm here for a reason, and it's a bad one. It changes things, Marina sighed, sitting down. But not as much as you think. Do you believe in destiny? A valet tilted her head. Huh? Yes or no? Marina shrugged. If not, it shouldn't matter why. Should it? I guess I do, man. A valet folded her ears. Or at least I think it's likely enough that I'm scared of the possibility. And it's a fear I try to live and deal with and sometimes I do a pretty good job. But I guess it can still mess me up from time to time. Marina was silent for a while. I have good news and bad news, Valet. Valet raised a cautious eyebrow. The bad news is, is that it exists. That's what these are for. Marina touched her cutie mark. No one knows a lot about them or how much they change things, but ponies who don't follow theirs are few and far between. Even Sorosians who are born with theirs instead of manifesting them when they find their greatest wish. I assume you know what yours does. The lady swallowed, feeling a lump in her throat. The good news... Marina hesitated, as if she were about to say something dangerous. Anyone can change. That's Wallace's mantra. It's the promise he gave to Diego and I, and the darker the world is, the brighter it shines as optimism. But... And I didn't find this out until after I had known him for a long time. It's not... Just an ideal. If you want to change your destiny, change even your brand itself, there are ways. You badly watched her in rapt attention. You've got my ears. Kashiva offers wishes to anyone who wins the tournament, Morina said. It's well known that she grants anything in her power. It's a lot less known that the Night Mother grants wishes too. Vle stared. There is no tournament involved, Marina continued. All you have to do is visit her, and the things she can do. Have you heard the tale of Giovanni Goldfeather, whose offspring broke all the known rules of sphinxes and changed the Empire's political landscape for generations? Legends survive on the wind's breath, saying his curse was actually a wish from her. If you wanted to be something other than what you are that badly, there is a way. <sighs> Valley grimaced. But I really like... I don't like tonight, Mother, though. Bananas, all this stuff with bad ponies being picked on here? Why doesn't she help if she's so cool and great and everything? And that stuff with Starlight going to Gyre? She was behind that, apparently. But uh, she sighed and took a breath. If I did want to find her, I don't suppose it's as simple as telling me where she is. Everyone who knows isn't allowed to say, Marina shook her head. And even if they were, I don't know. Wallace does. He's made a wish to her before. It's why he's so strong. Many think his strength isn't natural, but none expect to actually be right. Valet watched the horizon. So you just have to scour the entire empire, huh? And probably all of Mistville, too. There is a hint. Marina hesitated. One hint 
Known as Garshiva's Riddle, and passed down in the Griffin Empire in plain sight for those who know it is there. You've probably heard it several times. It goes like this. Glory to Garshiva. May her love, as deep as the Oldenfold, and her virtue, as pure as the moon, be revealed to the entire world. Well, bananas, <laughs> Billy folded her ears. Yeah, I have heard of that. That's a riddle. Wallace tells me it is. I'll pass, Vully said after a deep breath. As much as things worry me, my cutie mark is a weapon. A really, really strong one, and even if there's some shady purpose behind it, I've used it so far to protect my friends. I'm not about to wish to be weaker. But thanks anyway. It means a lot. Marina eyed her, nodding slowly. More sparring? Yeah, Vully got back to her hooves, then hesitated a final time. Uh, maybe this means something more to you than it does to me, but yeah, my cutie mark lets me predict opponents' attacks before they make them. Basically, lets me see the future. Marina froze. Valet mirrored her reaction, wincing hard. That's a bad thing, isn't it? Sighing, Marina stood down, dropping all pretense of fighting. Foretelling the future is one of the Griffin Empire's divine heresies. Vali's eyes bulged, and she stomped a grasp beneath her into a muddy pulp. Oh, come on! Marina winced sympathetically. There's a reason for it. Knowledge of the future is supposed to be exclusively the domain of Garshiva. Anyone trying to do the same, like charlatans and card-reading tricksters, are seen as infringing on her holy right. But I've never heard of a pony who can really- Whoa! Valise cutie mark twins, and she ducked left to avoid a surprise right hook. Only the punch never came. Marina's eyes widened slightly. Yeah, <laughs> Valise wiped the mud off one of her hooves with another. That's why I do so good in the tournament. But so that makes me a pretty big liability to my friends, I guess. <sighs> Marina sighed. I don't know what would happen if Meltdown found a pony who truly can tell the future. It could be anything from condemnation as a heretic to having your brand sealed in obsidian and locked away to being regarded as a goddess. How tightly have you guarded what you can do? Uh, because of the tournaments? Bananas. Pretty tightly, Valet shrugged. It's my one big advantage. I don't want my enemies to know how I work so they can prepare. My friends know, though, and anyone from Iron Ridge like Kiro, so Chauncey... What to? Her eyes went huge with another realization, and she suddenly felt even less okay than she had before coming out to spar. I think I need to talk things over with my friends all of a sudden. Gazelle is kind of hanging out on my ship, so do you mind if we use yours? Marina shook her head regarding the mess they'd made of the field. Whatever you realized, good luck. Valley swallowed, flapping her wings and taking off. Thanks. If I'm right about what's going on, I'm gonna need it. End of chapter 634